Camp Lejeune. I salute you. This one's for you. Okay, so let me start out. Um, I want to tell you that I am the author of a book, but my book is more about the Navy. Uh, but in that book, the Marines are heroes. There's a lot of good Marines in there that I think you'll be very pleased about. And this Navy family, this Navy wife, I love the Marine Corps because most likely I might not be here talking to you today had it not been for the Marine Corps. They were our heroes. They came to our rescue when we were in trouble. They had our backs. And now I hope to have your back. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Camp, Camp Lejeune water contamination. And I want to tell you first that I've never been to Camp Lejeune. All of my work is done as research, but I don't know much about that, the politics or how it was polluted or anything. But one thing I do know is I do know the chemistry. So today I'm going to take you through um, some of the top chemicals that were found at Camp Lejeune in the poisoning. Now, Camp Lejeune water contamination problem occurred at the Marine Corps base Camp Lejeune from 1953 all the way up through 1987. Well, as a scientist, I want to tell you that we don't all of a sudden stop putting pollution in our water or toxic poisonous materials in our water and they go away the next day. So probably as I speak today to you, there's still toxic material going into the water at Camp Lejeune. All right, so that's, you know, that pretty much is the thing. Now, how many people were actually exposed? Well, as I did my research, I found all kinds of estimates, and I'm sure that a lot of them are correct, but we don't have a correct count. The VA service uh, estimates that 900,000 members of the Marine Corps and their families were exposed to tainted water. Other sites have much higher, higher numbers. Now, you can decide who you're going to trust on that one. I'm not going to tell you because I've had good and bad results with the VA. Some exceptional work and then some horrible work. Okay, so they did a routine sample of Camp Lejeune, and essentially there is a, an extensive list of chemicals found in there. And I could keep you here till midnight going over them, but what I did today was take out the top ones, the ones that were very heavily uh, poisoning the water. So I'm going to go over trichloroethylene, tetrachloroethylene, vinyl chlorine, and vinyl chloride, excuse me, and benzene. Okay, and you say, okay, what do those things mean? Well, if you're like my kids, you're probably rolling your eyes now. And if I get too technical, please type in the comments, TMI, too much information there, Linda, because we scientists seem to get excited about uh, the different chemical components, where a lot of you guys, eh, you're not so happy with it. So these people that were working at the base were exposed to these terrible poisonous chemicals, and I'm going to name a couple. Now, the thing you have to remember, a little bit of everything that's here can seep into our water, but the Marines and their families at Camp Lejeune were, were exposed to contaminated water in concentrations 240 to 3,400 times higher. I'm going to say that again, 240 to 3,400 times higher higher than the levels permitted as, as a safety standard. So anytime they tell you, well, you could have gotten it from this, you could have gotten it from that, that's a bunch of baloney. That is a bunch of baloney and don't buy it, okay? So let's start with our first bad guy, trichloroethylene. And uh, I'm not gonna read you the formula. If you want, you can look it up, it's on the side thing where I listed all the chemicals. Now, trichloroethylene is a colorless li uh, liquid. 
it's chloroform like in order in odor excuse me so if you've ever smelled chloroform uh, you'll have an idea what it smells like and if you're familiar with chloroform a lot of times that use is used to you know to make people pass out now uh, try chlor chloroethylene um, can cause an irritation to the eyes and skin okay if we get a high concentration of it these are some of the things that will happen dizziness headache sleepiness confusion nauseous nausea unconsciousness liver damage and sometimes even death and it is known as a carcinogenic that means it harms it causes cancer um, and what determines the effects of any of these chemicals that I'm talking to you about is the amount or the dose the duration and how it enters the body so and what work is being done with it so for example if you just casually pass by it you would have less chance of being exposed to the toxin than if you actually put in a drinking glass and drank it okay so what is trichloroethylene made for well it's a solvent that's used to remove grease from metal parts it's an ingredient in adhesives paint remover even that little typewriter collection correction fluids which most of you young people probably don't know about and dry cleaners use it for spot cleaning our fabrics okay so if you were working on metals okay you probably were using that right out of the the container uh, if you were uh, working where they wanted to cut down the greases the oils the facts that fat, uh, fats the waxes or tars this would be a good one to cut it down now it was used years ago and they stopped doing it to scour cotton wool and other fabrics but since they found out it was so dangerous uh, they don't really use it for that anymore dry cleaning workers will use a diluted form of it to remove spots and sometimes factory workers and plants that produce pharmaceuticals they'll get it by accident okay it's also the people that make it are in danger because it's used a lot of times to make its close relatives or other chemicals that are similar to it okay so it's really a bad kind of thing and um, it's not a good thing so tetrachloro or tetrachloroethylene is the first one I wanted to talk to you about and it's listed in the EPA as a real bad guy so if you want to search that you can take a look at my list and look at some of the other chemicals but this is one of the top ones that was in the Camp Lejeune water during that long time period okay the next one will sound similar but it has tetrachloroethylene notice in the beginning it says tetra tetra is prefix naming the amount of oh well I'm getting technical now you're going to roll your eyes okay tetrachloroethylene is a non-flammable colorless liquid and you might hear it commonly called PCE or it might be called tetrachloroethylene it could be part of that it's it's these two are very close to the other they might call it perchlor and uh, you can actually smell this one it's present in the air and uh, even at the at the level of one part in a million you can still smell it okay again this one is a dry cleaning fluid and a metal degreasing so uh, it's also used to make other chemicals it can be released in the air water and soil at places where it's produced or used so if on the base at Camp Lejeune they were using this chemical it would go in the air in the water and in the soil now once it's there this is a real bad guy because most chemicals will degrade in other words fall apart this one doesn't this one has a long long time until it breaks down so it hangs in there a long time but the one thing it does do is it evaporates quickly from water into the air 
So if you had water and there, it's inside of a pipe, not going to have the water evaporate, the tetrachloroethylene. But when you all take a shower, let's say you're taking a shower or using the sprayer in your sink, that tetrachloroethylene will evaporate, enter through your nose and your mouth, wherever you're taking an air, and enter your body that way. Any type of entrance into your body through your smell, through your taste, and through your skin, which is the largest organ of the body, is probably the most dangerous way. So if you had it down, if you had it in your water, and let's say you drank it right away, you'd get a large amount of tetrachloroethylene. If you left that glass sit on the table, it would probably evaporate in the air, but you're not escaping from it because now it's in your air. Okay, so this one, if eventually, should be one of the easiest ones for them to get rid of, except that if we go back to the beginning, remember the high amount of dosages in there, how many parts per thousand. <laughs> I would bet my, my next paycheck on the fact that it's still there. So uh, you can be exposed to that uh, if you were working on a dry cleaners. When you drink water, you might be exposed to tetrachloroethylene, and it would be in the air. And again, I said when you shower or bathe, it would be going in through your respiratory system. Okay. So what are the, some of the things that tetrachloroethylene does? Well, it's another bad boy, really bad. Okay, it can cause on this, on, immediately. Uh, it can cause dizziness or drowsiness, headache, incoordination. Higher levels can cause unconsciousness and even death. Higher doses and longer periods. Or I'm sorry, higher doses, longer periods, even at a low level. Tetrachloroethylene can cause changes in mood, memory, attention, reaction time, and even your vision. Uh, there haven't been a lot of studies done on tetrachloroethylene and its effect on humans, but the studies have shown <clears throat> excuse me, that tetrachloroethylene is a carcinogenic, and it affects the liver, kidneys, and changes, changes the brain's chemistry. So a lot of neurological problems, things that were going on with your brain, are affected by tetrachloroethylene. Okay, how likely is it to uh, cause cancer? Again, we don't have a lot of studies with people, but the animals show that there has a high amount of bladder cancer, multiple melanomas, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, and so kidney, liver, blood system. This is bad, this is a bad boy. And I don't like these chemicals. I'll tell you, when I was doing this, I just, there were a couple times I had to walk away after reading these chemicals because sometimes knowledge can be wonderful, but knowledge can also be scary. So the internal and International Agency for Research on Cancer considers tetrachloroethylene as a carcinogenic to humans. So the studies are still open that. Now here's where your children come in. It's not known whether children are suscept more susceptible to adults to the effect of uh, tetrachloroethylene, but studies have shown an increase of birth defects uh, in children as a result of uh, exposure to, to high doses of, of tetrachloroethylene. So, and this again has been done mostly, you can't experiment on new babies and form deformed babies, but most of this has been done in animals. And the animals have shown a clear indication that this can cause birth defects. So this guy is another bad guy. Don't like any of these chemicals and I'm sorry they put them out there. That's why I do these things, because I'm trying to prevent them from doing it again. All right, the next guy, the next bad guy on the list is benzene. Now, this might sound a little more familiar to you. Okay, benzene is a colorful, flammable liquid with a sweet odor. 
it evaporates quickly when exposed to the air. So if it's in the water, it'll evaporate quickly. Uh, you might find this naturally. Benzene is found naturally um, in volcanoes and forest fires. But most of the exposure that humans have is because we screw up and we put it somewhere where we're going to use it for something and those human activities bring it to us. Okay, benzene is among the 20 most wild, widely used chemicals in the United States. It's used in making other chemicals. In other words, you might pull up benzene if you want to make plastics, lubricants, rubber pieces, dyes, detergents, drugs, and pesticides. And it was once used as an industrial solvent to dissolve or extract other uh, substances. And at one time was used as a gasoline additive, but they have pretty much reduced that. So benzene is part of our crude oil. In other words, when we draw up the oil from the ground, benzene is one of the uh, parts of crude oil that exists under the ground. Uh, so it is going to be something that might be a little bit in your, your oil that you use in your home or the oil that you use in your car, but the levels in there are not that bad. Now, guys, the other thing that's bad about benzene, if you're determined to be exposed from benzene, exposed to benzene, you might have someone, and I won't mention who, when you go in to make a claim, say, um, you got that from cigarettes. All those years of smoking cigarettes, you got it. But the amount of benzene in the cigarettes, even if you're a heavy smoker, is not going to cause a lot of the effects. So don't buy that, okay? So it's, you know, it is there in cigarettes and it's in your motor oil but not to the point where it's going to poison you, unless you're working in a gas station day after day after day and all you do is handle motor oil. Or, you know, if you're in some, if you're, I don't know, the airport has those rooms, they look like clouds of dust. If you're in sitting in one of those airport smoking rooms for hours and hours and hours, maybe that would make a difference. But if you're a smoker, you smoke in the car, you smoke outside, most people go outside now again, now and away, so. Um, it's, it's not going to be to the level that they had at Camp Lejeune. Uh, so how are you exposed to this? Um, the best, probably most of us are exposed to breathing, okay? Most of us don't have it in our water, but Camp Lejeune did. It can be absorbed through our air, taking it into our lungs, into our body. It can be exposed through our skin. Remember, our skin is the largest organ on our body. And anything that touches our skin goes to the rest of our body. It's a big intake unit. And so um, it's, it's, it's really a bad thing. It's really one of the bad things. And where would you find it? Well, you're going to find it all over. But again, not to the amount that you would find with that. Okay, so again, this is bad stuff. They're going to blame it on cigarette smoke and secondhand smoke. And by they, I think you know who I mean, the people that take in your, your claims. I love them and I hate them, what can I say? Okay, so most people are exposed again from cigarette smoking, but I don't think the people at Camp Lejeune, that was it, uh, that they were, you know, I, that, not the amount that I read, not the amount that they have. Now, what are some of the cancers that can be caused by benzene? Boy, this is a really uplifting thing. Uh, well, what they found is that benzene can be linked to leukemia and other types of blood cells. Okay, so it's going to be one that's going after your circulatory system. Okay, so the cancer rate, um, again, has everything to do with your circulatory system. So uh, leukemia and acute myeloid leukemia, AML, have been found in workers exposed to high levels of benzene. 
those working in chemical plants, shoemaking, and oil refining industries. Now, some studies have suggested, and uh, very strongly, that children are more receptive to, receptive to getting childhood leukemia, uh, especially a type of leukemia called AML, and acute lymphomic leukemia, ALL, and chronic lymph lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, and other blood-related cancers, uh, multiple melanoma and non-Hodgkin's melanoma or lymph noma, mostly in adults. But they're still out on that. They're still working on that to see, but, you know, it takes time with these studies. It depends what study you look at, whether they verify it or not. But the risk is pretty high with benzene. It's another bad boy that's going in there. In some cases, benzene has been shown to cause chromosome changes in the bone marrow cells in the lab. And this is where new cells are made, in your bone marrow. Bone marrow is on the inside of your bone. It's the soft area on the inside. And it makes sense that it would be there since it's the one bad boy that attacks your circulatory system. If it messes up those new cells, the new blood cells that are being made to circulate in your body and changes their structure, then all those bad cells, those mutated or changed cells, are going to be going around. Uh, so, and there, therefore, it's going to be going around your whole body. So, where are we getting this information from on all these bad guys? Well, I did this work from the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, and this is part of the World or Health Organization. And uh, I, I, I value their opinion. I took some of the information from the National Taxology Program and from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. Uh, any other kinds of, well, with benzene, okay, suppose you just get a little bit of it, okay, even that can cause dizziness, headaches, tremors, confusion, unconsciousness. Now, if you consume it, then you're going to have vomiting, stomach irritation, dizziness, sleepiness, convulsion, and rapid heart rates. Oh, and it just gets worse as we go down here. Irritation to the skin, eyes, and throat. So these guys are really, really bad stuff, causing anemia, white, low white blood cell count. So that means you'd be vulnerable to every disease that comes along, low platelet count, excess bruising and bleeding. So it's, it's not a good one. All right, the next bad guy, vinyl, vinyl fluoride. Now in there, you probably recognize the word vinyl. And you might associate it with vinyl seeds, vinyl this, vinyl that. Well, when you add the chloride to it, the chloride part, lousy. Okay, it makes it a lousy thing. Uh, when I was studying at Penn State, I took a course on uh, toxology, poisons. And uh, it's, it's amazing how you can take something and just add one or two chemicals to it and make uh, some of the most poisonous substances on the earth. For example, everybody knows water. We need water. We drink it all the time. We add a couple of molecules to it. We get hydrogen peroxide. That's what the ladies use to color their hair. Or we get, might get ammonia. That's what we use to clean the house. And both of those can be dangerous if taken internally. All right, so let's get to this bad guy, vinyl chloride. Okay, this is primarily a manufacturing used to make those PVC pipes. Uh, and that's where it's going to be used mostly. Naturally, it exists as a colorless gas that burns really easily. It's very, very easy to get it to burn. And it doesn't occur naturally. In other words, we wouldn't go out in nature and find it like we could with benzene. It's made industrial. It's made by a chemical company. Okay, so it's used primarily to make polyvinyl chloride. And that's PVC, and that's those pipes. And you know you love those pipes, but that's what they're made of. And probably the coatings on those aren't going to be really that bad for you. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know that. It's also going to be another one. Here's where you have to be careful when you're putting in your claim. It's also produced when you smoke a cigarette, your tobacco. But again, go back up to the beginning of my presentation. Never will you ever, ever, ever approach the amount of vinyl chloride that was in the Camp Lejeune water. Even if you sat all day and smoked cigarettes from dawn to dusk and stayed up all night and smoked from dawn, dusk to the next morning, 24 hours of cigarettes, you, won't, you, you would not match the levels that I found when I did my research of Camp Lejeune. All right, so let's take a look at this bad guy. If, uh, so vinyl chloride can be in the water, and when the water is used for showering, cooking, or laundry, it goes up in the air. So it's going to be both taken in by the water and by your breathing. So there's a couple cancers that, again, are associated with this one. Another bad guy, liver cancer, uh, as well as brain and lung cancer, lymphoma and leukemia are listed. So guys, I gave you a list of all the bad guys. Now, there's a long list. This is not anywhere near uh, completed. I put that link over on the side for you to take a look at. Make sure you take your, t take your time and take time and look at them. Some of them you'll recognize. I was going down the list and there's uh, arsenic in there. There's beryllium in there. Now, probably to you that doesn't mean anything, but that's one of the metals that really is not a good guy either. So guys, I promised that I would do this for the sake of the Marine and for all the Marines out there that were stationed and their families at Camp Lejeune. It's not my brightest and happiest video, but I hope you learned something from it. And I hope I didn't get too technical and that you understood what I did because we scientists tend to think that everybody's enthused about chemistry and they aren't always. So today, besides being this kind of day, I'd like to wish everybody a good Veterans Day. Because as you know from visiting Fading Mirror, the, the Facebook page, I love vets. I mean, you know, my husband was a veteran. And he is the reason why I'm doing this, because my husband died at 39, my bud, my sailor. And there's no reason why bud should be dead. So I pledge to expose things like that. But happy Veterans Day to you. I hope you're planning something. We in Florida are having constant rain, so I don't think we're doing anything like that. But coming up on Sunday, coming up on Sunday is a part of Fading Mirror that was cut from the book. And the topic is the naked pregnant crab and the tricycle. Oh, this is, this is one of the funniest things I did. And it happened while my husband, of course, was deployed. He was out to sea. And I'm putting together a tricycle. Pregnant, just about ready to pop. So it'll be a funny one. So that's Sunday, uh, November 15th at 10 o'clock. You want to see the premiere of it? I'm going to be at 10 o'clock on Facebook page, or my Facebook page, my personal one. Coming up, November 21st to the 22nd. I did a whole weekend of the Marines, so near and dear to me, November 21st, 22nd, I am going to do a whole celebration, Navy celebration weekend. And I have a sailor I'm going to interview, but as yet I'm not going to tell you his name. We're going to get that interview set up, and then I'll do another funny story from the Fading Mirror book that wasn't in the book. Oh, there's so many of them. Now, if you missed any of those funny stories or the serious ones, you're welcome to go out to uh, Fading Mirror's YouTube channel, and I put that link over on the side for you, too, so that you can go out and take a look at them. And, of course... On the side is the Fading Mirror website. Well, take a look at my book and see if you like it. I think it's pretty good. So I'm surprised. I surprised me even. So guys, I salute you all. 
Veterans Day is yours. Enjoy. Don't eat too much. Don't drink too much. And if you do, make sure you're safe. Linda have to throw, sending you a kiss and a big hug. And to the Marines, a special salute. Bye for now. <laughs>